everybody and welcome back it is Marissa I am back from vacation today um, it is about four and a half hours from my house to my sister's house so I drove down on Thursday I came back yesterday but I got home yesterday evening and needed a nap um, so before we actually get into the crochet today I want to show you a few things that I got, um, I have an amazingly awesome sister. I'm just going to brag on her a little bit. And so we don't always get to get together for holidays and things. So I actually have my Christmas presents. Now, for some of you know, I'm like a huge Harry Potter fan. She managed to find these Harry Potter bags and she's gotten me all kinds of different sizes and things like that. I think that they are completely awesome super excited I think they're probably gonna go on the wall and I'm gonna actually show you the handful of stuff she's really good about gathering things up as she as she finds things so the first thing that I got is I've got two of these cups like this and they say stand tall and stand out um, I believe she said they came from Dollar Tree but there is a set of two here which I am just absolutely loving these match my flamingos in my kitchen so I'm gonna be using those definitely um, the next thing which is also a kitchen accessory is she got me some of these hand towels and so I've got another set of really nice huge hand towels for my kitchen now ones like this I don't actually use I use these for decoration and not to actually use in the kitchen because I don't want to get them dirty. So they've got the design on one side, they're blank on the other side, but they're the like a little bit heavier than the um, oh flower sack ones. So they're a little bit thicker than that, but very awesome. I'm super excited about those. Let's have the flamingo again on them. Um, the next thing, which she's gotten me several different things here this is one of my favorite things so she found these at Michael's and I think she got them for like 250 so they're the little tic-tac containers um, that a lot of people have and use I think I'll probably use these for long-term storage I didn't realize quite how small that they were so I'm thinking long-term storage but she went above and beyond and she did this saying and it says Marissa you are like a diamond resilient strong and beautiful I thought that was amazing she had sent me a picture of this so I knew I was getting these but I absolutely love this so if you guys have your storage and things don't, don't you know take some time to maybe personalize it a little bit but I absolutely love those I'm looking forward to using those she did have some of the um, labels that we all look for she had some already in her stash that she wasn't going to use so she went ahead and passed those on to me so I've got some of those um, this is a I got a big haul guys I'm very excited I've got some uh, key covers that so basically like you put them up at the top of the head of the key and they come out like that so I thought these were really cute so I think I'm gonna use those for my um, probably my house key and maybe one of my work keys but those were very, very cute. And I'm talking really fast. Sorry. Uh, the next thing that I got is actually a set of things. So she found these like this time last year. And she had set these aside for Christmas. And it's the Amopay Petty um, electronic nail care system so you use it like on your feet and things like that so she got me the set and then she got another set of the uh, files and then she got the nail care oil so I guess this is kind of like cuticle oil that goes around so I'm going to be using this for sure I've been wanting one of these I was super excited to get it so I've got that Amopay kit Uh, let's see here. Keep digging. She got me <laughs> this fan, which I thought was super cute. Let's see if I get it to open up. Uh-oh. There we go. And it says slay on the inside of it when you get it opened up. 
So it's just a little fan that I can take with me when I go to my um, like Celtic festivals and things like that. If you ever need a little fan. The next thing is this awesome little ring holder dish. I don't wear a whole lot of jewelry, but I do wear a lot of rings. Um, I have three or four different rings that I alternate wearing. So she got me that. So that will probably go on my kitchen counter on my bar so that I can use it in the kitchen and it matches all of my designs in there. So that was the next thing. And then this next two pieces, uh, I've got two different crosses. So she got me that one and she got me this one. And I do have a cross wall and she's very good about getting me crosses that um, look really good on my cross wall. So I have a lot of large crosses and I needed some smaller ones to kind of fill in some spaces. And so she got me these two, which I absolutely love. They're very Western in design, which my crosses go all over the place. They're, they're all kinds of different ones. So I've got Western, I've got, um, cast iron, I've got Celtic crosses, um, just all kinds of different ones, but I absolutely love these two. These will look really good with the sets that I already have. Uh, the last one that I actually got was a turquoise one that she got for me. So this one will match that one really well. So I've got two new crosses for my cross wall. Okay, so that is what was in the first bag. In the second bag, which again is the Hogwarts bag, it's a little bit smaller. I believe this actually came from, yes, so this is the one that came from my nephew, uh, Colton. He just graduated. That's where I've been the last couple of days. And he made the international team for DECA. And I don't know what DECA stands for, but it's basically they go and they do presentations and different things. You guys probably know what that is. And he got to go to Disney World. So I've been to both Disney World and to Disneyland. But when I went, it's been several years, and they didn't have the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. So he got to go. So I have this really cute little Gryffindor bag here. And he got me, he picked me up two things at Wizarding World, which I was very excited about. So the first thing that I got is this Ravenclaw keychain. And I absolutely love it. I'll bring it a little bit closer. Hopefully you can see it. It's a Ravenclaw keychain. You can see it's Wizarding World of Harry Potter Universal Studios. So I absolutely love that. That was not what I had asked for. I'd asked for a Christmas ornament, which is what this next one is. And he sent me some pictures and let me pick out which one I wanted. And so this is the one that I picked out that I wanted, which is a Ravenclaw um, house crest. And so I loved this and he threw the keychain in because they were on sale. <laughs> so there we go. My awesome nephew, who by the way, is not a Harry Potter fan went specifically and made sure that I got the two, the one thing that I had asked for and then threw in an extra. So those are going to go on my Harry Potter Christmas tree. Yes, I have a Harry Potter Christmas tree. I also have my regular tree that I also put up in the living room. The Harry Potter tree goes in my bedroom. So this third bag, which is just like the first one, it's the same size as the first one. My sister, who also is not a Harry Potter fan, made several things to hang on my Harry Potter Christmas tree. So when I decided to do that Christmas tree this year, I had gone to Dollar Tree, had gone on Pinterest and gotten several ideas, and I had gone to Dollar Tree and gotten different things. Well, one thing that I couldn't find were the little potions vials. So she made this stuff, and she just got on Pinterest. She did a little bit of research. She has no clue what any of this means as far as the story context but she also made me this lovely little it's just a little sorter and then she put some paper down in it so that I could keep these nice and intact so we have this one here we have an empty one but it's got the she's got the labels on it and she did send me extra labels 
Um, and so if I can find things to put in these vials, she'll be able to do that. Here's another one, which it says this is Wolfsbane, I believe, potion. If you're a fan, you'll know what that is. We've got this one here, which is... I think Mertlap is what that says. So she took some beads. And those are in there. And you can see it actually does move. I think she said she used clear glue on these. Or in these. At least in that one. If I'm remembering correctly. We have a Mortentia. Which is a love potion. So the label is heart shaped. We have a teeny tiny one here. <laughs> which I thought was a really cute little one. So I'm gonna have to probably get fishing line out for these to hang on to the tree. And I like that these are small enough because the tree is only like a four foot tree. So it's not a huge one. Here's another one. I think this one's for frog eggs, but it's another empty one. I love that they're all different sizes. This one here, which I believe is, I can't actually read that label but she's put in some, uh, well, I don't, what is that called? String, I guess, probably embroidery floss. Um, some pink glitter. We have this one here, which is unicorn horn. So you can see it's just iridescent glitter and I believe she put this one in with some clear glue as well to kind of give it a fluid look. We have Phoenix Feathers, which is one of my favorite ones that she did. So she, there's actual feathers in here. So I absolutely loved that. We have Hobgoblin Brains, which is green. And then she put in some of these like this, which she's already put um, oh, you know what I'm trying to say on it. And so we have a set of four of those little ones, which I thought were really cute. I love these. These are very cute. I love the shape of them. So we've got those there. And then we have, she had this little hourglass here. And to me, this looks kind of like a time turner. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to figure out a way to put that on the tree. And it isn't actually a working hourglass. So I loved it. And then she made me, you guys, are you ready for these? If you've seen the first Harry Potter movie where he goes into the room with the flying keys, she made me flying keys. And I think there's five or six of these in here and they're different sizes. They're so tiny. You can see where I'm holding them in my hand, how tiny that they are. But I love these. These are my favorite. Um, these are some of my favorites. I absolutely love them. I couldn't find the keys. That was one of the things I couldn't find when I was doing my tree originally. So she gave me all of that. She made all of that for me by hand, which again, I have an amazing sister and she's my big sister. And <laughs> I'm just bragging a little bit, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Not really, but <laughs> I'm kind of sorry. Um, so I'm just going to set these over to the side. I'll have to work on putting them back in correctly. So that's the first thing out of there. The next thing that she made for me, and these are for the tree. It says, Master has given Dobby a sock. Dobby is free. So I absolutely love these. She did make these. Um, she cut the, the vinyl out. And um, so I'm just going to actually just hang these on the tree like this. So they are for my tree. And you can see the stuff coming off of them is the next thing out, which are these. 
And so these have got the Cornish Pixie outline in them. And they're little lanterns. And they do actually light up. I've got two of them. I think I will probably take these out on a nice day and seal them with a clear sealer because uh, the glitter, as you can see, is coming off a little bit. Um, they do have the batteries in there. I just have to put them together and they will light up. But I absolutely love these. These are too cute. I could hang them on the tree just like they are and it would be perfectly fine. So I've got some, some of those. And then she made me... Um, and sent with me some extra uh, like glitter some extra filler for some of the the potions vials and things like that and then she sent extra labels lots and lots as you can see how much is coming off lots and lots of extra labels that I can use if I want to make some more potion vials of my own I've got them all kinds of different sizes and different shapes things like that um she does have a she has both a cricket and a silhouette and so i had asked for um oh here's some more more labels bezors and skelegro and different ones like that and then she made me some extra wings that she'd printed on vellum so if I want to make some more flying keys, if I can find some that are larger, perhaps make some more flying keys with these. And guys, she found all of this stuff online. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that she got it all for free. So she found it on different websites. She found it on Pinterest and different places like that. Um, but she also, she has a silhouette and a cricket. So I had asked her to make me a monogram like this one for my um big yeti type tumbler and so she made me one for that which is already on my cup and then she made me the smaller one the one on my cup looks exactly like this one it's just larger and then she made me several more like this different i love monograms i'm a southern girl that way she made me a couple different versions of my name that I can put on things and purple is my favorite color so she made them in purple and then she made me a couple of shamrocks like this and then like you take this one and this M this green M on here actually fits in that circle so you have to do a little bit of layering but some extra oh, there's still stuff down in here hold on just a moment There's another baggie of stuff. And then this is my name in white. And then here it is again in purple. So I will be able to monogram my little to my little heart's content. So here's another bag this size, which she's put the, the bow on. And I think she said in one of these card slots. Here it is, here's another potions thing here. So I will probably put those back into the card slots. And then she got gave me several extra bags, so I have some more Gryffindor bags here, which I will probably use as decorations on my tree. And I think that that is it so you guys this is basically my christmas and my birthday and my just because presents um which i am just absolutely thrilled with she's such an amazing sister she's so talented and crafty i'm trying to get her into doing the diamond painting and now that colton's graduation is over she actually has some time to focus on it so hopefully i will be able to convert a new diamond painter here soon give me just a second while I remove all this from the table but thank you Tammy I love you sister you treat me so well okay guess the kitchen towels are going to be a little bit glittery. 
<laughs> that's okay. <laughs> so I've got to get all that put up and find a home for it, but that won't take too long. So we've got that. Okay, so now what you're actually here for, which is the crochet video, um, you got a little bonus there. This is a like wet swimsuit bag that I found at Family Dollar or Dollar General last year, and it is perfect for taking a small crochet project with you. Um, I can just throw it into a bag, into a larger bag or a backpack or whatever, and take it with me. So this is like my traveling crochet bag. I'm gonna pick up a couple more this year. I think it was about three or four, maybe five dollars, but it's absolutely perfect for taking a small crochet project with you or one that you've just started. So I would recommend picking up some of those if you have access to one of those stores or if you have access to those. My traveling scissors, which stay in that bag pretty much always. So one of you guys uh, contacted me last week that had joined the Facebook group and you were having some difficulty with our dishcloth. Now you guys can see I didn't have a whole lot of time to work on this. I did get some more worked up. Um, but I found the flaw in the pattern that I shared with you last week. And that is completely my fault because I did not test the pattern before I showed it to you guys. That's on me and I do apologize. I didn't want to cause any frustration or anything like that. Um, it was just a very busy week last week. So, um, a couple of corrections. I'm not actually going to give you a different pattern this week. I'm going to let everyone work, continue working if you haven't finished this one. So what you're going to do, the correction to the pattern, is I went back and I chained 32. And I think in the first video I said 33, but it should actually be 32. So um, chain 32, okay? And then you're gonna do your first row, or your second row after your chains. Those are all going to be single crochets, just like we did the first time around. Now, the other thing that changes is when you go in to do your next row, you're still going to chain two. Instead of going into that slot there, you're going to skip this and go in here on every single row. And you're gonna go in with a single crochet And then you're going to alternate to your half doubles, single, half double. So I think where I was, where I messed up telling you guys was in that first stitch. I think we were putting it in the wrong spot. That is on me, that is not on you. You are not crazy. That was incorrect. My edges were coming out wobbly. And so I pulled everything out, or frogged the project, and started over. And again, I do apologize for that. I will work all the patterns in future before I show them to you guys to make sure this is what Mrs. Coffee does. That's exactly why Mrs. Coffee does that uh, for that magazine, um, is because when I work up a pattern or someone comes up with a pattern, what I say on a piece of paper in a pattern or what I tell you guys in a video may work for me and it may not be understood by you. So what Mrs. Coffee does is someone writes a pattern and they write it down on paper and we'll get into written patterns eventually. Um, they're not my favorite to work from. I tend to work from visuals um, or I pick a stitch and kind of go from there. But um, what she does is someone writes a crochet pattern and she goes in and she actually works up the project to make sure that the directions make sense and to make sure that someone else that is not the pattern writer understands those directions. I have done that for a friend of mine that uh, created a beer cozy um, that goes on a belt and she had written this pattern up and she sent it to me and asked me to work it up and see if it made sense. You know, and I made the, a couple of corrections in a couple of different places for things that when you're an experienced crocheter, you automatically do, but people forget to write into a pattern sometimes. And, you know, and that's all it was. So you're just going to work that up. You can see there's my half double. There's my single. 
Here's my half double. And then, don't forget this last over here, that makes your row come out on a single like it's supposed to. So you can see my edges are now straight on both sides doing it that way. So again, that is my fault. If your project, if your edges are all wonky on your project, um, try pulling it out and frogging it and doing this with a 32 count foundation chain and then skipping your turning chain and going into the first stitch here. So again, I apologize. We will not do that again. <laughs> I will work every pattern up before I present it to you guys. So basically we're gonna finish this this next week because again, I only got half of mine done. Some of you may have gotten more than that. Um, I did see some pictures where people have gotten pretty far. Um, you look like you were doing really well and didn't need the extra um, advice or anything like that. Uh, for me, again, I worked the original pattern and it didn't work, so I frogged it and figured out the issue. So if you got to a point and your edges were all wonky and it wasn't working, that's my fault. It's not your fault. Do not feel bad. Do not get discouraged. And I will do my best not to have that happen again. So we're going to finish this this week. And when we get back um, at the end, we will um, basically what you're going to do is you are going to make this as big as you want. Um, I will probably about double what I already have done here. And then when you get to the end and you've decided it's as big as you want, you're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is again, this is optional. You don't have to do this, but if you would like it to have a little loop so that you can hang it up, you're going to chain six. And then this stitch right here, which is the bottom of your turning chain, you're going to come back and you're going to do a slip stitch. So you're going to pull up a loop and pull it through. And then you're going to pull it through the loop that's there. And then you're going to do another slip stitch, pull it out and tie it off. And then you'll have a little loop where you can hang your towel up if you would like to do that. Again, this is an optional step. I like doing this because I've got those little command hooks hung all over my kitchen exactly for this reason so that I can hang up towels and different things like that. So I'm going to do that again. I chained six at the end of my work. So I just completed this final row. So wherever your final row, wherever you want it to be, I'm going to go in here, which is at the base of my turning chain. Pull up a loop, so you've got two loops on your hook. Pull this front loop through the back loop, which is your slip stitch. And then you're going to pull up a loop. You didn't go through anything. You're just going to pull up a loop and pull through. And then when you cut this, it'll give you your slip stitch, your knot at the end here, just like when we finished the other, our um, tester, stitch pattern things so and then you'll have a little loop if you want a bigger loop um chain 10 chain 12 if you want a smaller loop chain three or four but to me six is a good loop size that'll fit over pretty much anything if you want to put this like around a door no or um, a cabinet knob or something like that i would chain like 10 or 15 just to give it a little more room if your cabinet knobs are, are big cabinet knobs. But for most things, that works just fine. So, you guys, if you have any questions, let me know. You can get, find me on Facebook. I'm in my group on Facebook. I'm in several other groups on Facebook. So if you don't want to join another group, you can just kind of uh, tag me in a message. You can put your comments down below. Let me know what you want to work on next. Because I have not got that far yet. Um, my niece, my oldest niece, Destiny, is now six months pregnant. So I really need to start her baby blanket. So if you guys don't want to do any other smaller projects, if you want to start working on a blanket, we'll start working on a baby blanket next week. That is completely up to you, or if not next week, maybe the week after. 
Um, that's completely up to you, but this is was my project here. I didn't expect it to take two weeks, so I'm a little flustered here. Um, I'm not getting a lot of feedback from people, so let me know what you guys want to do, what you want to do next, and um, if I'm not hearing from anybody, then we'll just start a baby blanket next week. It'll take considerably longer than this, um, but that's okay. If you guys want to do more projects like this that are smaller projects, things for the kitchen, things for the bathroom, um, I can teach you to crochet in the round. We can do face scrubbies and different things like that. Let me know that as well. Um, but basically, just kind of give me some feedback. Some people talk to me. Let me know what you want to do. If you're an experienced crocheter and you have suggestions, I'm more than willing to um, try working out, you know, your suggestions and things like that. If you want to do granny squares, we can do granny squares um, and just all kinds of stuff. I'm very open. I'm going to let you guys kind of go in the direction you want to go. If you don't have any clue what I'm talking about, that's okay too. So go ahead and finish your washcloth. If you want to use this, you could use this just like it is. This could be a trivet where you set a hot pan on it. It could be um, where you pick up a pan with it so you can fold it over like this. You can use it as a pot holder. Even the way this is now, I can still make this work. Um, so that is completely up to you. I am going to go ahead and make this into a large dust cloth is actually what I'm making here. Washcloth, dust cloth. I have rambled a lot. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed my little birthday Christmas haul. Um, I will be back hopefully later this week with another video for you. I've got a couple of ideas in mind. Um, it won't be crochet related. It will be diamond painting related. And I actually picked up some stuff today. I've been to Dollar Tree. So I picked up some stuff today to make a wreath. So we may be making a wreath here in the next couple of weeks uh, for my summer wreath for the door. And I've just got some ideas and we're going to go from there. But you guys, I missed you. I haven't been around a whole lot. It's been really hectic. It's going to continue to be kind of hectic. So again, you know, bear with me. Let me know, you know, if you've got any questions or anything like that. If I see you in chats or whatever, um, feel free to ask those questions there as long as the creator that is hosting does not mind. I don't mind answering those questions. Um, but until I see you next week, please leave comments. Let me know what you want to work on. Um, and guys, happy hooking until the next time I see you. Bye.